So, good morning. Um, today's lesson is called Transformed by Trouble, and it's day 25. And um, welcome back, everyone, or welcome back to me. Uh, we just got back from a vacation. God blessed our time. We had a wonderful time. Uh, and we're, I'm also glad to be back home and back in the... Uh, back at work and um, all that. So... Um, let me let me begin by talking about reading this verse. How does suffering, how do suffering, trials, disappointment fit into God's plan to make us like Jesus? Romans eight twenty eight. Uh, we know that in all things God works to the good of those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. In all things God works according to the good. So how does how does this fit um, when we're going through things? And we're trying to figure out what purpose would God have in me going through some of the most difficult things in my life. Does that fit into God's plan? Is this is God asleep? Did he make a mistake? Am I being punished? What is the purpose of trouble or suffering? Madame Guyon said, It is the fire of suffering that brings forth the gold of godliness. I'll have to say I've, I've never met a very I've never met a mature Christian who hadn't gone through suffering as part of their maturing process. Um, I also like on page 193, this quote by Johnny Erickson Tata, who was paralyzed as a teenager when diving into a lake, and she spent her whole life as um, paralyzed. And she, write, she writes, when life is rosy, we may slide by <clears throat> with knowing about Jesus with imitating him and quoting him and speaking of him. But only in suffering will we know Jesus. And she suffered a lot, and she has a very deep walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. And then um, Rick Warren has a good statement in here too. We are like jewels shaped by the hammer and chisel of adversity. If the jeweler's hammer hammer isn't strong enough to chip off our rough edges, God will use a sledgehammer. If we are really stubborn, he uses a jackhammer. He will use whatever it takes. So God has a purpose in mind for everything in our life to make us like Christ. And that includes the when things are going well, that fits into his plan. And then when things are going through real difficulties, that fits into his plan. Right now, we're going into a lot of through a lot of difficulties as a country, as Christians, as individuals. There's um, the coronavirus. There's racial tension. There's a lot of concern politically, um, financially, economically. Education is on people's hearts and minds, and people are nervous and anxious. And we can know that God is going to use this for the believer, for the Christian. That God is going to use this. Um, John Calvin once wrote that the same sun that hardens the clay melts the butter. So it's the same sun. So how are we going to respond to adversity? Are we going to be hardened? Will our hearts become hardened and we become maybe even accusatory to God? Or do we become soft in our hearts and we want to trust God and walk with him and hold closely to him and say, Lord, I don't know what your purpose is in this specifically, but over all I know it's to make me like Jesus and help me to surrender to the process of becoming like the Lord Jesus. I want to read five scripture verses that I think are very helpful in this regard. And I'll go back to the opening book of the Bible in Genesis chapter 50. Joseph had been persecuted by his own brothers. And later in life, he so understood that, that he could, under, he could say to his brothers this, as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring about that many people should be kept alive so as they are today. So Joseph knew that his brothers had intended evil against him, but he had such a view, such a large view of God that he had come to the place that he saw the hand of God in it and that God was even going to use it for the salvation of many people. There's a verse in Jeremiah 29 that a lot of people love where the people were going to be um, face captivity and exile. 
and God could even tell them ahead of time, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. I think many of us can say, honestly, that it was when we were going through something that we first called upon God. It was when we called out to God and we, we were afraid of the circumstances that were going on. Then in uh, Romans chapter 5, there's a little picture of how suffering fits into the purposes of God. But we rejoice in sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And then um, one last one, um, 2 Corinthians 4, 16 to 18. We do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. So God has a great purpose for us, even through the difficulties that we might be facing. Sometimes it's when we think God has forgotten us that we discover that he is taking us deeper in our faith than we would have ever chosen to go on our own. So I hope that helps you today. Maybe you're going through something right now that's difficulty and you wonder where God is. He's right with you. He's right there with you in it. He has not forgotten you or forsaken you. Maybe you're getting ready to go through something and you're going to need to know that God will use that purpose to transform your life. May God bless you and may you be transformed by whatever trouble you're experiencing in your life. May that not make you bitter but it may it make you better. May it make you more like Jesus. God bless you.